Welcome to Fresh Manna from El Bethel Ministries. Today's devotional is from Matthew chapter 1. This chapter 1, there is an account of the genealogy of the birth of Jesus Christ from Abraham through David till Jesus Christ. It gives a list of the forefathers or ancestors of Jesus Christ, the list of all names of men. Interestingly enough, we find the names of five women. These include Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba and Mary in that order. We can understand why God chose godly women like Mary and Ruth. Mary, as the scripture quotes, was a highly favored one. The one chosen to give birth to none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mary fully understood the implications and consequences of giving birth to a child without physically knowing her betrothed Joseph. But yet Mary was obedient in saying, Be it unto me according to thy word. Ruth, on the other hand, a Moabite woman, clung on to Naomi, her mother-in-law, even after the death of her husband, and through Naomi clung on to the God of Israel. As she rightly states, Where you go, I go. Where you stay, I stay. Your people are my people, and your God, my God. But why did God choose the other three women? Tamar became pregnant through her own father-in-law Judah through deception. Judah was not even aware that Tamar was pregnant, that he had slept with her. So, we will not go into the details of why Tamar did what she did. Though she feels that she has been wronged by not being given as wife to the third son of Judah. But her approach and the very act were not lawful. Yet in this genealogy account, we see the mention of Tamar and her son Paris. Rahab was a prostitute. And Bathsheba, on the other hand, who is referred to as the one who is Uriah's wife in chapter 1 of Matthew. Her name is not even mentioned in this chapter. David sinned against his God by sleeping with someone else's wife. And yet God chose the womb of Bathsheba to further the genealogy of Jesus Christ. This account throws some light into the heart of Jesus Christ. God is not interested in your lineage, your bloodline, your country of origin, your dysfunctional background, your past failures. He is not even interested in your physical attributes. For example, Samuel anointed David as a king of Israel because God did not look at his outward appearance but his heart. God was sorting out a person of his own heart. God is also not interested in your virtues or lack of it. He is not interested in your charity, your good works, your righteous character, your eloquence of speech or your wisdom. As Paul says, he considers his confidence in flesh, his righteousness in law, his upbringing as dung or loss in comparison for knowing Christ, for the gain of Christ. So the moment you have accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, you are a child of God. You belong to God. What you are, what has happened in your past, what is happening in your present does not alter what God intends to do with your future because we serve a God of our futures. God can choose even the lowly, the despised, the rejected, the brokenhearted, the weak, the meek, the unwise of this world. God can turn your limitations. He is more than capable of using what is left behind for his divine plan and purpose. So it's not the beginning that matters, but your end. It is not the starting of your race, but how you finish it. If you are persistently obedient to the calling of God, be assured of a great finishing. So let us pray. Dear God, we come today with all our past baggages and we hand it over to you, O God, believing that you will touch and transform our lives, that you will make us more into the likeness of Jesus Christ, that we may have a victorious race to finish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.